Hi. So this lecture is uh, is a continuation of uh, our previous lecture about uh, matplotlib. So in our previous lecture, we worked with uh, uh, we talked about two ways of plotting graphs in uh, Python. So either you can use functions available in this pyplot uh, package uh, of matplotlib, or you can also use object-oriented programming where you can you create figure object and axis object of its figure and axis classes. So let's do some more examples here. So in this case, uh, we use this function subplots of this uh, package and we created two objects. One is the object of figure class and the other is the object of axis class. So this figure object creates an empty window or empty template using axis object we can, we can plot different kind of graphs and uh, set different feature of the graph um, on this figure object so here we have used uh, these methods and these are the methods of the axis class now you can also uh, change feature of your window for example if you run this you get this so if you use method of axis you are going to make changes here in this box so you can make changes in the axis X axis, Y axis, you can set the attributes, you can make changes in these graphs. So, so the method of this axis object are used to control different features of this graph, but figure object can be used to control this figure window. You can set the background color of this figure window, you can set the size of the figure window. There are many things that you can do here using different methods available for this figure or figure object. So you can also pass some arguments here. To perform various things on this uh, figure window, let's do that. So, so first thing I would like to discuss is the figure size. So you can control the figure size using uh, this uh, keyword figure size. So here you pass two values and one value, first value is, is the width of figure and the second value is going to be the height of the figure. So these values are taken in inches. So for example, you said 6,8. That means 6 is the width width of this window and 8 is uh, the height of the window. Default size of the figure is 8,6. You can change the size. For example, you can increase uh, the size um, width of this figure to be 10 and height. You can leave the also you can reduce the height by 5. So now you'll see the figure of different dimension. So let's save it and run it. So when you run this, you see that you have this figure size. So figure size may not be very clear at this point that uh, because you can always change the figure size but when you save this figure and you use this figure in some other document then you will see that the figure size is what you have defined here. Let's keep the default size and you can also control uh, resolution of the figure. This is called DPI. Uh, using DPI, DPI means dot per inch. So here you can set the number of dots you want per inch. So, so if you set like for example 100 here, then your figure resolution is going to be 8 times 100 times 6 times 100. So this is going to be uh, the resolution of your picture. When you multiply 8 by 100, so you are going to get these many points horizontally. And when you multiply 6 by 100, you get uh, that number of points. Uh, vertically when you multiply the two you are going to get the resolution of your picture uh, uh, that is the number of pixels your your figure is going to have so when you run it you don't see any change see any changes here because the color is white and uh, so the change of pixels may not be very clear here but if you make some graphs which occupy more area of this uh, window then you will see the difference in pixels if you make changes here there is another option here, it's called face color. You may change the face color of your picture. Face color means the background color. So remember, these changes are being made on the figure object, not on the axis object. So figure object is this figure window and axis object is this area where you have plotted your figure. So here you may set any color. For example, you may set red color here. If you set red uh, color, then background of the, your picture is going to be red. So let's run this. And you see that background color of this window is has become red. 
but there has been no change uh, on this graph on the axis because we have not changed axis now you see that when I say axis axis means the, the area where you have plotted your um, graphs that includes the graph itself and the axis and this box so any changes if you want to make any changes in this area you have to use this axis object but you can also change uh, background color of uh, your graph using uh, axis object for example if you want to change the background color of this area uh, you can set that you can simply say ax dot now using a method available for this axis object set underscore face color decide here anything for example let's say we set a green color so you can also write g or you can write complete green word when you save it let's run this and we see that the, the background color of this axis has changed to green and the background color of figure is still red now you should be able to make a difference what figure what we mean by figure here and what, what we mean by axis here Gip Python also allows to uh, have multiple axis object on one figure so multiple axis object means so every axis object allows you to draw a graph so if you have multiple axis object on one figure you can draw multiple graphs on one figure so let's work with an example which is going to demonstrate how we we can do that uh, for that let me just uh, comment this and start a new example so now again we create figure and axis objects using this uh, subplots method so in subplots method like we did here we specified uh, different properties of the figure that we want to have but you can also here uh, decide how many axis object you want to have in this figure so you can create an array of object for example if you write 2 comma 2 that means you are creating an array of size 4 now you are going to have four axes on one figure that means you can draw four different graphs using different axes on this one figure so we are going to have subplots in this case if you use this we are going to have let's say this is your figure uh, this figure will be divided into four axes and uh, on each axis we can plot uh, different gra graphs they are called subplots and you may decide to have any number of graphs on one figure and but you have to mention that here here I have defined two by two array of axis objects so there are going to be two rows and two columns no other arguments we are passing here so we are assuming that all other arguments are taking the default value you can also set for example you are going to have uh, uh, four graphs and four graphs are going to have their four different titles four different axes but you can also set a title for the figure so for that you we use figure figure dot subtitle so this subtitle is is a method for this figure object now we are making changes to the figure not the axis so so we just want to have title for our window or figure window so I'll just write here this has this figure has four graphs and you can also set font size of this title I, you can use that font size anywhere with in plot and uh, in axis dot plot uh, so this property font size so here you can uh, write any number the size you want for your title so let's say I want it to be 12 or you may want 14 because the title has to be a little bigger so now let's try to to plot graphs on each of these four objects we have created four axis objects uh, so and this is an array so let's call the first object so you have to call object from this array the way normally we use for arrays so we are going to plot a function so let's use the uh, plot method so let me just plot x comma y so x comma y is just so x is this vector and y is a sine graph so i'm plotting sine graph and here you can specify for example color let's say the color is green and you can specify marker let's say the marker is O and uh, here you can specify how you want to connect these O's how you want to connect different data points of your graph so that we for that we use line style 
we define our line style by this uh, hyphen and we have used this before in our previous example and here also you can specify the marker size it's up to you so let's define marker size to be uh, let's say 8 the font size of the marker is 8 so you will see the bigger size of O and you can also set title for this axis so title I can say set use the same thing that we have used here set x label you can set x label you can set y label you can set the title so set underscore title and here you can simply write this is a sign function graph of sign function now you can repeat the same thing with other objects so the next object you are going to have is give, let's give one line space so that it is more readable so next is going to be 0 comma 1 first row second column and then let's plot uh, x is the same as before now x is the same as before but z now we are going to plot cos function here so we'll use z here and again you can specify some properties let's say the color is red and the marker is plus and uh, this is your line style and marker size let's have same marker size for all graphs say 8 and here you can set a different title 0 comma 1 and here let's set title to be graph of sin cos function so this is graph of cos function similarly let's uh, define graph for another axis third axis that going to that that is going to be 0 1 comma 0 and we use this plot method again and let's say we leave, we keep x as it is and i'm going to define exponential function exp of and here you can also define let's say the color is yellow and we use the marker static and let's use this hyphen as a line style and the marker size again you can define marker size to be 8 so ax1 comma 0 dot you can set the title so title is the graph of e exponential function let's define the last graph the last graph is going to be going to have this indices 1 comma 1 dot plot let's leave x as it is and let's plot some graph of some polynomial so i'm going to uh, plot graph of x square plus one comma here again define the color let's say the color uh, is blue and we use uh, let's use this marker so this hat means now every marker is going to be a triangular marker and let's use uh, this line style and again set the marker size to be eight and let's set the title ax1 comma 1 dot set underscore title so here you can set the graph of graph of x square plus 1 okay so we are we are going to have four graphs on this one figure window let's save this and run this so it says that text object is not callable let's see where is where we have made mistake uh, line number 45 okay so I missed here set save it and run it again you see that we get this uh, graph this graph window so if you look at this title this figure has this has to be has four four graphs so this is the title of uh, the figure window then we have titles for each of these axes axis means this graph Right. So graph of sine, graph of cos, and graph of exponential function, graph of x squared plus 1. And you see all the specification that we have defined for different graphs are shown here. Okay, so, so far we are working with figure object and axis object. So we are using different methods for these axis objects here. But here fig dots super title is the figure title. Uh, so we have used just one method, one figure method for this figure object. You can also save your figure uh, so in order to save your figure we have to use 
this method figure dot save save fig so save fig belongs to the figure class so this is going to work for this figure object so first of all you have to define the file name where you want to save your figure so let's say the file name i want to have this picture is um, for graph and uh, dot here you can have any extension so this uh, allows you to have number of extension for example you can have png file pdf file eps file so let's use png here now the file that is going to be created will have this png extension and here you can also pass this optional argument dpi you can set the dpi the resolution of your uh, picture so when the figure is going to be saved it is going to be saved this resolution that you here that you will specify here let's say we specified 100 here that means we want 100 dots per inch and here you can also define the face color so let's say we want to uh, save the figure in red color so now this figure is going to be saved by this name and it is going to have this resolution and the face color is going to be red so this face, face color is going to be the face color of this figure not these axes so let's run this and uh, save this and run it when you run it uh, let's see where is this figure png so i am now currently in this folder uh, so you can check path of your folder here so if you just write pwd it's going to tell you where you are so in e directory i have abdul majid directory then teaching then spring and then finally i have this lecture 23 directory so in this directory this file has been saved you can save your file in any other directory uh, for example you want to save in uh, let's say in d you simply write d here then colon then double slash so when you are defining path in python you have to use double slash for single slash so normally single slash works for path but in python single single slash is not going to work because in order to print single slash you have to use double slash so here you can have let's say any random directory for example up to uh, example in d you have folder one and then in folder one you have folder two two so you can save so if you run like this and let's say this is a valid path valid path means let's say if you have direct in directory d you have folder one for in, in folder one you have folder two then this file is going to be saved in this folder two so you can define your path so this is very simple but we have saved our file in the current directory if you don't specify any particular path then your file is going to be saved in the current directory okay let's check this figure in our folder so uh, this is in this folder let's run this so you see that uh, we have uh, this background color is red while saving our figure we have specified that this should be the resolution and this this should be the face color that's why we have we see this face face color here but there's a problem here you, if you see that these numbers are not clear they have merged together or they have overwritten over each other so we need a proper spacing between the two figures so for that you can there's a function we can use there's a method for figure we can use called tight layout so using this function you can adjust the, the spacing between and uh, the subplots either you can leave it as it is or you can specify the number of spaces you want between uh, uh, different figures for example if, if i specify two here so let's see how this shows up in our figure so when you run this you get a new figure so you see that now that these figures are slightly more spaced there's a space be between them so you can control this spacing using uh, this method of figure object now let's see how this saved figure looks like so let's open this figure you see that and that now the things are more clear there's a proper space here so you can set that spacing using uh, this tight layout method uh, this two means you want two spaces between two two figures you can change this to any number as needed okay now let's talk about some statistics so you can also plot some statistical graph using a matplotlib so let's let's just comment this and work with some other example so now we, we are we are going to discuss how to plot histogram 
histogram of some data. So, for example, if I define a data to be an array, so that it's just a one-dimensional array, and it contains these numbers, one comma one, three times, then let's say two comma two is two times, then we have four comma four, four times, and suppose we have uh, three comma three, three times. So histogram is actually in histogram we can show the frequency of these numbers. So one has come here three times, two is repeated two times, four, four times, and three, three times. So in order to show this frequency, we can use histogram, and it's very simple uh, to plot in Python. So again, you create fig, and you create axis, and then we use plt dot subplot. We just want only one graph, so we don't need to specify any argument here. Now let's plot. Let's use histogram method for the axis object. So simply hist hist function is going to plot histogram of the array that you pass in. So our array is data. So let's save it and let's run it. Let's close all these windows. When you run it, you see that the, you see this histogram. Again, here you can specify the title. Uh, the label of x-axis, the y-axis label, the x-axis label, the y-axis label. You can do all sorts of things that we have done before, so we, we don't need to repeat that. Okay, now let's do a practical example where uh, we plot four histograms out of some statistical data. So suppose uh, you have two dice and you want to roll two dice thousand times and you are interested in the sum, the numbers on two dice. So the sums are going to be two to twelve and uh, we want to know their frequency that if we roll two dice 100 times how many times two is going to appear how many times three is going to appear so we, have, we want to check their frequencies so for that let's first define a function because we want to repeat let's say this process uh, many number of times for example if we we throw two dice thousand times this is our one experiment and then again we want to throw uh, two dice thousand times this is going to be our third experiment let's try this experiment four times and we are going to plot uh, four histograms for these four experiments on one figure so let's first define a function i would call it uh, uh, roll dice this function is going to take an argument and that argument is going to be roll number that how many times you want two dice to be rolled and uh, then we define a variable sum sum is going to be at this point it's going to be an empty array and empty array of this size and now we have to use for loop to sum the numbers that we are going to get on uh, um, two dice so for i in range here we use roll number because we have to roll two dice this number of times so the ith entry of the sum the ith entry of the sum is going to be rand int so we are using this random integer function so we have to import this first so this is first die the number is going to appear on the first die and the second die rand int one comma six so we have used this random integer function from the random li library so let's import it here it's better to import all uh, libraries at one place so import from from random import rand int let's save it okay so here we have calculated the sum now we are going to return this sum so this sum is going to be an array and every entry of this array is going to be the sum of the numbers on two dies okay so we have defined this list and this list contains the titles that we want for each subgraph and uh, here we have generated a uh, figure one figure and four subgraphs and on each axis object we are drawing a histogram and and histogram this histogram function is taking uh, this input and that input is this sum when you roll uh, two dice thousand times so you are going to get this sum array and every entry of this sum array is actually the sum of two sum of number on two dice now here we have set the title in this case the argument of this title is list list at kth index so the first time you will have k0 
and then next time we are uh, incrementing this k by one so next time k is going to be once so you get this uh, title similarly you will get titles for third and fourth run so let's save it and run it and let's see what we get so you see that we get four windows and uh, we have not set any label for x and y axis you can set the labels here for all of these four axis objects and you can set the title of this figure window where as we did before so this is how we work with the subplots method so i'll stop here for today so in the next lecture we are going to discuss few more examples for example we have to discuss how to plot a 3d surface or a 3d graph so this is one of the thing we are going to discuss uh, uh, in our next lecture Thank you.